Good afternoon and welcome to Carney Smith Stadium at Pittsburgh State University. Today's Hy-Vee High School Game of the Week. It's the 2022 Kansas 5A State Football Championship game as you've got the three-time defending state champs of Mill Valley taking on number one and undefeated Mays. Hi, everybody. Kevin White, Mark Richter, and our sideline reporter is Leon Liebel. This is the Hy-Vee High School Game of the Week, and this is the 5A State Championship game. Nine in all played in Kansas today, but this one they're calling the rematch as Mill Valley won last year, 28-14. Mays looking for a payback. They've got the top player in the state, but Mill Valley has the top defense in the state. Well, Mill Valley does have the top defense in the state, Kevin, and you talk about number one offense versus the number one defense in the state in 5A. This is going to be a really good one today. Mill Valley's defense only given up three points over the last five weeks. Mays' offense averages over 50 points a game. We'll see what happens here today. Time now for the high B player profile. Quarterbacks in the spotlight. Let's start with the Mill Valley QB. Well, for Mill Valley, it's Hayden Jay. It's number two versus number two. 1,300 yards in the air this year, 14 touchdowns. About 500 on the ground for him as well. He'll get it done with his legs. But the big story everybody wants to see today is Avery Johnson. One of the top quarterbacks in the country, 2,600 yards, a whopping 67% of his passes coming in. 29 touchdowns, only two interceptions. The K-State commit is looking to have a big day to here today in this rematch. Round two, Mays Mill Valley for a state crown in Pittsburgh, Kansas. It's the Hy-Vee High School Game of the Week. And we're back with the opening kickoff right after this. Cloudy and cool, the weather a major factor in this ball game as they're predicting we'll have some rain showers at some point during the ball game as your game time temperature right now in the upper 40s as we go down on the field for the opening coin toss. Guys, I've got a coin guys around here on the first side. On the back side, the delivery bell in the move. That's going to be tailed. I need you to make your call. You tell me what it's called. I'll toss it. I'll catch it. I won't turn it over. My drop is we're going to do it again. Go ahead and make your call. Tails. Hold the ball. Tails in the ball. Did the head. Major the Which would you like to put the back right there? Mays has won the uh, They will receive. Joel Appleby, head coach of the Mill Valley Jaguars, now in his 13th year. He's got five state titles under his belt, and he's looking for number six on this Saturday afternoon in Pittsburgh, Kansas. His team 11-1, and and Gary Guzman, he's in his 12th year. He's never won a state championship. He's been coaching since 1982 when he was an assistant at Ottawa High School for the Cyclones. Let's send it down to our sideline reporter. Here's Leon Liebel. Kevin, there's that old cliche in sports, something's got to give, and you talked about it. Mill Valley has not allowed a single point in four playoff games going up against one of the most dynamic offenses in the state, led by a very dynamic quarterback in Avery Johnson, one of the best quarterbacks in the country. We look forward to a great football game. As you mentioned, the weather may be a factor. There's a big chance of rain right now, though. It's really nice down there. It's a little cool and breezy, but we're ready to play for a state championship. Back to you. Thanks, Leon. Yes, Mays won the coin toss, and how much confidence is in their offense that averages 51 points per game? They said, we're going to take the football, and we'll get our first look at their offense against that defense for Mill Valley, and they outscored the teams in the playoffs 205 to nothing in the playoffs. The last team in the playoffs to score against them, the Mays Eagles, last year in this game. Bryce Cohoon. And Bryson Hayes are your deep men. Kenton Lofman will kick it off. Mill Valley in white. In black uniforms with white helmets. The number one team in the state, Mays. This will be a short directional kick. Fair catch called for at the 28-yard line. That's by Jaden Martin, who's a wide receiver. And now the offense comes out in the field, Mark. And... uh, I think people think this is a heavy pass offense, but this is a very balanced team with Avery Johnson running the show. And 29 touchdown passes, only two INTs this year. Yeah, they're, they're much more balanced than I think people give them credit for. 
in terms of running the football, but when you got an arm and a quarterback like Avery Johnson, you're going to look at what happens in their in their passing game. Deshaun Carter is the lone setback. He averages 7.2 yards per carry. Johnson to throw. Quick pass to the outside. Caught for a short gain by Bryce Cohoon, who's headed to Syracuse University to play college football. Guy is one of their speedsters. Well, one thing you're going to see, too, from this Mays offense, they distribute the football all the way around. They've got three receivers coming in, Kevin, with 30 catches apiece. Yeah, Cohoon, Hayes, and Avery Johnson, the quarterback, the three fastest guys on their team on second down. Avery looking deep and over the head of his intended target there, Bryson Hayes. The coverage was excellent there in the secondary for Mill Valley. That's a little double move on the outside. Trying to get Hayes one-on-one. That was Garrett Cronin, the strong safety, and he had good position there. And third down and six for Avery Johnson, headed to Kansas State. He is verbally committed to the Wildcats, but uh, don't forget, that doesn't stop other teams from looking at this young man because he's a valuable commodity, top ten in the nation. As here's Carter, and he's going to be shut down. Nice play by Noah Coy, one-on-one, and it'll be a three-and-out for the Eagles. Well, one thing you're going to see about this Mill Valley defense, we talked about how good they are, Kevin Wright. No points given up during the playoffs here. But the aggressiveness and how well they tackle in their linebacking core is really a key to their success. 4-2-5 defense. Drew Hudgens in his 12th year. Former Colorado Buffalo football player, native of Spring Hill. As the punt team out. Mason Teague in punt formation. Mays. He averages about 37 yards per punt. Backing at the 30-yard line with the return is Dylan Massey, the safety man. And he'll get eight yards on the return after the short punt. And now we get a look at Hayden Jay and the Mill Valley Jaguars offense. Everybody talks about their defense, Mark, but tell me about this offense. Well, this offense is extremely balanced, too, too, Kevin. Also, when you look at it, it's about 350 yards a game. They get a lot done on the ground, though. That's where everything really really goes for Mill Valley. And you'll see a lot of the read option stuff that they do operating a lot out of the pistol set. Aiden Jay won the state championship last year. He'll run it on this first down play. He'll get about three yards. Jay's number's a little bit down from last year. But there was a lot of situations where he was not playing in the second half because his team was winning so big. So you can't accumulate stats when you're sitting on the pine. Second down and six. This is Baker, and he is shut down on the play. Coming in, slicing in and making the stop is Christian Hansen, the defensive end, scraping down. Nice play by Christian Hansen on the outside. Came into this game, Kevin, 24 tackles for loss on the season for the Eagles. He leads the team in that category. He had eight tackles last week and a punt block and ended up in a touchdown. It's a guy that was a running back when he started in the program. They moved him to D-line. They like his speed there on the edge. Now third down. Pass to the outside. One hops the receiver. Hayes Miller incomplete. Coverage was good there. Like Cody Hubanks had the coverage as this pass just never got to the receiver there. Yeah, this ball just never really got up. Kind of fluttered a little bit out of Hayden Jay's hand. Bring up this fourth down. Hayden Jay also serves as their punter, 35. Point three yards per punt, and now there's movement on the defensive line. And Mill Valley going hard count. And Christian Pratt, Hansen uh, jumping offside. Approachment, number 24, defense. Five-yard penalty remains fourth down. So 
Mill Valley trying fourth to... and six goes to fourth and one. Yeah, Mill Valley just trying to steal an extra five yards, and they were able to get it done. Yep, Hanson in the neutral zone. And trying to go with that hard cadence. So two cracks at the hard cadence. Now they'll back out into a punt formation by Hayden Jay. Nobody's back to retrieve this. Except the gunners for Mill Valley. And they'll let it work inside the 10, inside the 5. And they'll back them up all the way down near the two-yard line. Well, we mentioned that this is a rematch. Let's go back to 2021 between Mill Valley and Mays. And early on, Mill Valley got off to a fast start in the ball game as they would lead it by 20 to nothing before the... Mays Eagles would start fighting back in this ball game. So Mill Valley was comfortable. Mays would get a rushing touchdown by their quarterback, Avery Johnson. He also threw one, but 14 was all they could get. Mill Valley tacked on another one in a two point conversion and won 28 to 14. Mays backed up. Here's Avery Johnson trying to take off Brock Wooster, the Mike linebacker. Says one yard is all you get. There's big number 18, the leading tackler for Mill Valley. So Mays just trying to run Avery Johnson up inside, try to get a little bit of breathing room right here. But you're going to see Wooster hold his ground right there against the block, wait for Avery Johnson to get to him and make the play. Officially gave him two yards, second down and eight. Eagles. 447 yards per game. Johnson stepping up, throwing, and the pass behind his, in his intended target incomplete as that one was going to Hayes. Coverage by Mikey Bergeron, and that was just a little behind Hayes. He couldn't reel it in. And Mikey Bergeron did a nice job. He mentioned this ball just a little bit behind Hayes. But watch the left hand right here come in from Bergeron to make sure that he's unable to make that catch. Rob Helm is the offensive coordinator for Mays in his 12th year. This is a spread offense. Backed up by a good Mill Valley punt. Avery Johnson out of the end zone. Throwing and high and incomplete. Cohoon was the target and the coverage was there by Baruch Hasabu. So another three and out for this Mays offense as the Mill Valley folks making their way up from uh, Shawnee. I guess making their way down. Technically going to north to south down 69 Highway. As now Teague at the back of the end zone to punt it away. Dylan Massey near midfield to return it. And he's going to let this one hit. After one hop, he'll field it from the 45. And he'll get 11 yards on the return. 41 yards on the punt. Good return. Short field now for the Jaguars as their offense comes out. they got co-offensive coordinators and Joel Appleby handling the run game. Mike Strack is the passing game coordinator. Averaging 48 points per game, 386 yards per game. That's up from 355 of last year. This team's only loss week seven against Olathe North, and it was a home loss in a game where they threw four interceptions and two were pick sixes. That ended a 14-game win streak. They're back uh, piecing together another five-game win streak now. And trying to win a uh, sixth state crown. Those six out of eight. They are the dynasty of 5A right now, the Mill Valley Jaguars. Here is Baker. Clogged up on the play. Defensive line doing a good job. Top defensive lineman is Caden Miranda. Third leading tackler on the team. Leads the team in sacks with 10. Yeah, he's a big guy in the middle. 
77 tackles from a defensive tackle, Kevin. A lot really, really active inside right there for the Mays Eagles. They play a 4-2-5. J.J. Milanovic is their defensive coordinator. And they're no uh, slackers themselves. Only giving up 14 points per game to Mill Valley's five as this is a jet sweep to Hayes Miller, the transfer from Palmyra. And this play is limited there as uh, Connor Padgett, the linebacker, escorted him to the chalk. And only a couple gain on this jet sweep. This is their top wide receiver, Hayes Miller, the senior. This is a little wrinkle that you'll see quite often here as well. This little jet sweep with that motion. A lot of action in the backfield for Coach Joel Appleby in the Jaguars offense. Jay stepping up, firing, and again low for his intended target, Preston Oliver. And we were down on the field earlier. There wasn't much win there, and I think that's uh, Jay is not getting it there, and it'll be fourth down and seven. And there's two passes in a row now from Hayden Jay coming up short. In his delivery, Preston Oliver was open for what would have been the first down on a little bit of a curl route. No kicker coming out. It'd be a long kick. Kenton Hoffman, a very good kicker, but they will go for it on fourth down. Jay setting up the screen has Kristen Baker, and he'll turn it up the field for a first down as he is down to the 12-yard line. They convert on a big fourth down and seven play. Well, I talked about that action, that jet sweep action. You're going to see it here again coming to the bottom of the screen. Throwback screen to Baker. Great play call at the right time for Mill Valley to pick up the first down and continue this drive. 14 yards on the screen pass. 11th catch of the year by Baker. Here's Baker running up the middle, spinning his way. Of course, the big story in last year's game was the running game with Reese Kennedy as Mays was outrushed in that game, 248 to 151. And we've got a player injured right now on the offensive line. It looks like uh, McKinnon, the right guard for Mill Valley, is shaken up. But that was really the big difference when you look at last year's game. We showed you the highlights, but... I mean, the yardage was pretty close. Turnovers was even. Passing was pretty close. But the big difference, rushing yards, Mays with 151, and Mill Valley with 248. Most of it by Reese Kennedy. Let's see if we can see what happened. He looked like his own friendly oh. five. Well, no. the lo- Yeah, he was tackled by uh, Eli Cunningham. And as Cunningham was bringing down the running back, look, his body fell into the back of the legs of McKinnon. Second down, fake the jet sweep. Aiden Jay throwing, has a man wide open for the touchdown. His tight end, Brody Brigham. Fourth receiving touchdown of the year. As he'll strike from seven yards out. And there's a penalty flag that will negate the touchdown. Talked to Coach Appleby about what he regretted about last year's game, despite the two touchdown win, was too many penalties by his team. I think they're saying this wide receiver down at the bottom of the screen is not on the line of scrimmage. Okay. It's pretty close. You mentioned Brody Brigham. What would have been his fourth touchdown catch on the year came in with only seven receptions. All he does is catch touchdowns down in this red zone. At the penalty yardage, second down and 11. Baker, not the biggest guy, 5'9", a buck 70. And squirt through some holes, he'll get it down to the nine-yard line. Third down and long. Mill Valley, 11-1. and one. They tied for the... Conference crown with Olathe North in the Sunflower League. Mays won the 
AVCT won as they had the undefeated record. Trying to get some early points here in the first quarter. Needed to convert on third down and eight. Give it on a jet sweep and a cutback. And fighting to the goal line in for the touchdown. That is Davion Harris, one of their wide receivers coming around the end. And he's a big guy, 6'2", 200. And he was a tough tackle once he got near the goal line as he pushes it in for the first six points of the game. Davion Harris with the rushing touchdown. So again, we see them using their wide receivers. Davion is kind of a hybrid player, tight end slash wide receiver, as there's Luffman's PAT right through there, and Mill Valley on top. Some big conversions, Mark. Uh, they converted a fourth down and long, and now with this uh, touchdown to Davion Harris, they convert on third down and eight. Well, the timing was off on this touchdown a little bit here, too. Davion Harris just a little bit late on this, but this is that throwback screen that was the big fourth down conversion to keep this drive alive to Tristan Baker, and right here, you'd like to see this, if you're an offensive coordinator, that time up a little better, but it actually worked out really well for Davion Harris right there, and then you mentioned a load at 6'2", 200, able to stick his shoulder down and get into the end zone. Only 28 yards on that drive, the short punt. Mill Valley playing the field position game, but took him seven plays to get into the end zone. Davion has a receiving touchdown now to put a rushing touchdown on the board. Yes, Coach Guzman's offense. A couple of three and outs and a punt as we check in with Leon. I've had Mill Valley touchdown. More good news for the Jaguars. John McKinnon, the offensive lineman who went out of the game with an ankle injury, got it wrapped up, rewrapped, and uh, he's good to go when the Jaguars get the ball back on offense. Is good news for the offensive line as Lawman has it on the tee. The Speedsters, Cohoon, who is a 5A state track champion in the 100. This will be Hayes, probably their fastest guy on the team at 437 as he takes it from the eight. Look out. And oh, he's tackled from behind. A saving special team stop. Guess who? Noah Coy. He's been everywhere. Uh, Mark uh, is now. Hayes a little shaken up, but he's going to stay out there. But uh, Hayes lost his shoe. Yep. <laughs> Noah Coy on the tackle. He's done a good job defensively in this game as a linebacker. He's the Will linebacker, second leading tackler on the team. But a good return. And third possession here of this game for Mays now. Twenty-eight yards in the return, a bobble by Avery. Now he's going to improvise, and he's going down. Three guys bring him down as he's able to get it back to the line of scrimmage. Uh, leading the charge, Rutkowski, the defensive end. Also there was Spencer Vaca, and I believe Truman Griffith. This is a very good defensive line. It looked like it was going to be an option, a little bit of an option player. Quick pitch out to Deshaun Carter. But the bobble, the snap, forced Avery Johnson back up inside. Carter will be one of the running backs. We'll also see Tavion Williams play two running backs. Carter in the ball game. Repositions to the left of the quarterback. Quick pass near side. And it's going to be a catch for Cohoon as he's able to catch it before it hit the turf and make the catch. At the 43-yard line. This is really nice by Avery Johnson. First of all, he moves the back to the left-hand side where the pressure is going to come from. And then recognize this ball actually hit the turf. That is incomplete. But to throw to the short side as well, now the still a heads-up play by Avery Johnson. Official was definitely blocked out. Now third down and three. Pass. Little screen pass. Carter, the catch, and the first down across midfield. The seventh catch of the year, Deshaun Carter moved the chains for Mays. A nice little wrinkle for Mays here as well. 
Sean Carter's been staying in a protection, just leaks out of the backfield in the void where there's no linebackers left to keep this drive alive for Mays. And again, Carter. And he'll lose yardage on the play. Well, it's back to the 50 is a man that was banged up in the championship game. Second team all league. Had a knee issue last year. But averaging 7.2 yards per carry. 15 touchdowns. Had two touchdowns in the win over Hayes last week. Linebackers showing blitz. Now backing. Johnson. Going to use his speed and not much doing as he goes out of bounds. Just a gain of a couple there. As you saw the linebackers, it looked like they confused him there as they dropped into coverage instead of blitzing. Well, Mill Valley, as you mentioned, showed blitz, then bailed out of it. But the coverage in the secondary was extremely sticky and nowhere for Avery Johnson to go with the ball. Just has to pick up what he can here. Third and long. Third drive of the game for Mays. Thus far, two three and outs. And a punt. Johnson. Rolling. Backing. In trouble. Throwing it away on the Mill Valley sideline as he got hit by Wooster after he released it. And Avery scrapes himself off the turf. And it'll be a punting situation, most likely for Mays, as once again he was back way up by the pressure. Well, the pressure from the two defensive ends. Jaden Woods really flushes him to the right hand side, and Rutowski's there. And the right move for Avery Johnson just to throw that ball away. Now, Teague is not on the field as their punter. Avery can punt the football. Massey. Now he's moving back as now Avery Johnson sends this one off the side of his foot. And this will be a very short punt. Not much yardage gain. And Mill Valley catches a break as they'll have it in pretty good field position. They're spotting this football. Twenty-six yard line, so only a twenty-two yard punt. And early frustrations by Mays. And now here comes the Mill Valley offense out on the field. Late first quarter. Got a nine-yard jet sweep touchdown run by Davion Harris. That's Harris lining up at a right wing position. Said he's a hybrid player. Jay keeps it on the quarterback read option and a nice run on first down of nine yards by Hayden Jay. Well, he can do a lot of damage really with his feet. We've seen him in the first couple of throws come up short. He'll pull two offensive linemen, run the quarterback right behind it. Pick up nine yards on first down. Mill Valley will take that. Hugh Banks, the safety man with the shoestring tackle. Jay averages 5.2 yards per carry. He's more rushing touchdowns than last year. He has 14 coming in. Here's Baker. Cutting it back. He'll have the first down. He runs across the uh, 40-yard line. We'll see Baker and Graves in the backfield. It's a pretty nice play by 34, Aiden Flores here on the outside. You're going to see him actually work, contain this fight off the block, and then make the tackle on Baker. Flores, one of their top tacklers, has 65 total tackles coming in. First down run for Baker. Tackled on the play by Elijah Cunningham. One of the defensive linemen after a gain of three. Steam defensively, 22 takeaways, two shutouts. 
compared to six for Mill Valley. 14 points per game. The offense gets a lot of pub. I feel like their defense is a little underrated. Here's Baker. Not much doing on this play. You mentioned and their offense gets a lot of pub for Mays, but defensively, they're really good also. I mean, you don't get to the state championship game here without having a stout defense. You mentioned 14 points a game. They play really well as a unit. Paget with the stop. Yeah, they only gave up 37 points defensively in the playoffs. Wins over Salinas South, Cape and Mount Carmel, Hutch and Hayes. And they scored 169. That's their differential. Third down, pass to the outside. Hayes Miller the catch, breaking a tackle. He's got the first down down the Mill Valley sideline. Move the chains for the Jaguars. That is Hayes Miller, their top pass catcher, his 38th catch of the year. Well, Hayes Miller has over 20 catches more than any other player on the Mill Valley offense. You saw right there the big body guy on the outside able to shake the tackle right at the sticks. Keep this drive alive for Mill Valley. Third down conversion on third and long. They got 14 to Miller. Also a track athlete. As here's Baker. Gain of one for Tristan before he's hauled back. That is Peyton Ritter, the leading tackler for the Eagles. He's one of their linebackers. Wouldn't be surprised here with about 15 seconds to go if Mill Valley even runs a play here. Looks like they uh, want to line up, but I don't think they're going to snap the football. Clock will wind out on your first quarter. And the three-time defending state champs get a jet sweep touchdown run by Davion Harris. And lead by a touchdown in the 2022 5A state championship game right here on Spectrum Sports. The game of the week is brought to you by Hive. They're proud to support Kansas City High School Athletics. Cloudy, cool, but the rain has held off. Here in Pittsburgh, Kansas, Crawford County, Kevin White, Mark Borichter, Leon Liebel, our entire Spectrum Sports broadcasting crew bringing, the, bringing you the 2022 5A State Championship game. After one, uh, nice hat. Well, the, the Mill Valley defense uh, living up to the pub they're getting, Mark. Well, so far here in the first half, Mays offensively not able to do anything. And Mill Valley's offense just methodically moving the ball right now. Play action. Jay throwing to the outside. There's Miller wide open. Miller inside the 20. Scampers down the sideline. Goes out at the 16-yard line. It'll be a gain of 21 and a first down. Hayes Miller with the explosive plays on this drive for the Jaguars. Well, this isn't where Hayden Jay wanted to go with the football initially, but Hayes Miller worked to the sideline, found a soft spot in the zone, made himself available, and another first down pickup. Had a touchdown last week in their win against Blue Valley Southwest. Here is the running back, Baker, finally grabbed on the play there by McKinley Joins. But he got a nice crease there, and this little guy, he gets through it. He's a quick little back. Tristan Baker averaging 6.9 yards per carry. Yeah, over 20 touchdowns on the year. Not the biggest of backs, but a nice opening yeah, it's right a, there for him. Nice 11-yard gain. It'll be first and goal now for the Jaguars as they scrimmage at the five-yard line. Again, trying to take advantage of a short punt by Mays. And not much doing here as No, not much doing right there at all. May showed a little bit of an inside run stunt from the right hand side. Mill Valley changed the play, ran left. The Mays' defense was all over that. Yeah, this play was stuff. And back in the game comes Tristan Baker. Quarterback option, and this run is shut down. And it was Elijah Cunningham. 
first contact there. The D lineman, the senior. Miranda also there. These guys do a good job. And well, Watch Elijah Cunningham right here sift through all of this, come up underneath Baker, who's trying to make that block and make the play. It's a tremendous play by Elijah Cunningham right there. Well, third down and goal. Still the same line of scrimmage, the five. Jay wanting to pass. Gets away. Now throws to the back of the end zone looking for his tight end. Too tall. And that was Brody Brigham. And it'll be fourth down and five. Well, this play action was looking for Davion Harris in the little hide route behind the line of scrimmage out into the flat. Mays did a nice job of covering it up and then getting to Hayden Jay. Nowhere to go and just threw that out of the back of the end zone. Luffman 7 for 9 on field goal attempts. And he'll try it from 22 out of the hold of Hayden Jay. Wooster is the deep snapper, the linebacker. And hit the left upright and it is no good. And he didn't make good contact. That looked like one of my... Uh, bad iron shots. It looked like a shank job. And hit the left upright. No good. He's 7 for 10 on the year. 7 nothing. Mays trailing here as they dodge a bullet here. Early stage of second quarter. Well, give a lot of credit to Mays' defense right there. Holding strong. Forcing that field goal just off the left upright. Teammates trying to get him to shake it off. But just not good contact. The ball wasn't really uh, moving at a high rate, but it came to a dead stop when it hit that upright. And taking over after the missed field goal, trying to find some life in this offense is Avery Johnson, number one player in the state of Kansas. And Carter not going anywhere. And here's a guy we haven't talked about. Jaden Woods, this guy, the sophomore, you talk about a guy getting some pub, but this guy is. Well, he is. And 6'3", 220, only a sophomore, as you mentioned. Six sacks on the year. We saw him pressure the last possession. He's going to be a good one for Mill Valley here in the years to come. Already a semifinalist for the Buchanan Award. He's got D1 offers falling in his lap left and right. As here's Avery Johnson again going in that scramble mode. And then setting up the screen. And this is Tavion Williams. And I don't think he got back to the line of scrimmage. As uh, running him down was Wooster. These linebackers so active. And again, Avery looks frustrated. as you Just nowhere to go with the football, but stays calm. Able to get this out to Williams. But again, the tackling, the short tackling of Mill Valley and Wooster to basically make that for no gain. Man, that was the Superman tackle there as he came flying in on the Mays running back, Tavion Williams, his fifth catch of the year. And now third down and long. Seems like Mays has been behind the chains throughout the first half. Avery stepping up. Avery, tackled by Coy, shy of the first down. Nice open field stop by Noah Coy, the Will linebacker. It'll be fourth down and short. Fourth down and one. One of the things that Mill Valley's doing defensively, only bringing four guys, Kevin, right now pressure-wise. They've got a spy, which is basically Coy right there on Avery Johnson. And then their secondary has been extremely sticky with the coverage here in the first half. Punt team coming out. Dylan Massey, the deep man. As you take a look at Coy, who's had a very good first half, special teams and defensively as Teague sends a low end-over-end punt. Ah, talk about uh, that would be me topping a driver off the first tee there as he kind of put some top spin on that. And the short punt. Nobody touches this. I think he just kind of put some top spin on this punt. Yeah, just a low low contact point for his foot. He dropped it low. Yeah, ends up being a 29-yard punt. No return, but 
For Mays, the pressing issue is they have not been able to get their offense going against this very stingy defense Jaguars have. From the 43, first and 10. And they fake the jet sweep as Harris was being tackled, had the football in his hands. And uh, the quarterback, Jason, that's not working. I'll just try to get what I can, but he'll actually lose a yard on the play. But Harris is going down with a tackler with the ball in his hands here. Yeah, this is supposed to be to Davion Harris all the way. And that's Christian Hansen, the defensive end, wrapping him up at the mesh point. And Hayden Jay just trying to make something out of nothing right there to avoid a bigger loss. Fake the jet sweep. Quarterback blitz throwing down the field. Oh, nearly intercepted as that ball came up short. Cody Hubanks had his eyes get real big there as instead the pass came up short. He was looking for his third interception of the year. Yeah, and this is Christian Hansen getting on the outside with the pressure for Mays. And Hayden Jay trying to force that up the middle to Baker. Wasn't really that close. You mentioned Hubanks. Yeah, it wasn't that close. And Hayden Jay lucky Hubanks wasn't able to stay on his feet right there and get to that ball. Mays crowd, the home side, making a lot of noise. Jay looking down the field to Miller, and he can't make the catch. Hubanks, great coverage in the Mays secondary as he had good inside position and knocked it away. And it'll be fourth down punting time for Mill Valley as the Mays fans have something to cheer about here in the first half. I mentioned before, Hayes Miller had about 20 catches more than anybody else coming in for Mill Valley on the season. One-on-one coverage on the outside on the post route. Once again, Hayden Jay is a punter. Averages over 35 yards per punt. And now will fade back. This has been a good defensive series for Mays. And the punt nearly blocked as the ball is away as... Miranda, the defensive guy, missed the ball and crashed. Did he hit, make contact? Now, that's the call here. I thought I heard two thuds here, Kevin, just yeah. in the audio. I thought he made contact with the ball. Number five, 47, defense. Five-yard penalty. Remains fourth down. Still fourth down. It's running into the kicker, Miranda. Let's see if we hear double clicks here. No, I didn't. I, I think his leg got underneath the arm there. Of Miranda just hit him and just missed the ball. And I feel like our uh, white hat, and that is Jeff Wells, said uh, he, he didn't hit the ball. So it's still fourth down. Yeah. There is the guy in charge, Jeff Wells. Justin Stevens is the solo safety, and now he is finally backpedaling as upon away by Jay. Stevens inside the 15, and Stevens will get two yards on the return. Special teams by Bergeron, also Massey, superb, as they were all over the punt returner from A's. Well, the result is basically the same. A little bit yeah. worse field position here to start for Mays on their own 15-yard line. But, again, to go back to that defensive series for Mays, nice job defensively holding Mill Valley there. Boy, these senior classes have been something special. Both over 40 wins in their career. Mays 41-7. and seven. Trying to win a state title as they scrimmage deep in their own territory. This will be Carter. And Carter has not got on track. This Mill Valley defense, they call themselves the Land Sharks. So uh, it's not like this is the first time that they've had a good defense. So we've seen a number of very good defense. And, and obviously they're on a streak right now. Three state titles. Five of the last seven. And I think people... Uh, be curious 
how good this defense is as this pass caught on the outside. This is the speed guy, Hayes, and he'll run for the first down. Bryson Hayes runs a 4-3-7, and this is their one of their staple plays. Throw it to him on the edge, and he runs for a first down. Yeah, this is just a simple pitch and catch to the outside, but he's got a little bit of cushion out here. Picks up a nice block. That was Stevens with the block. Stevens, and you mentioned Hayes can really fly. You don't want to give him too much space, but that's a big first down right there for Mays. And now here's Carter. Grabbed and spun back. Making the uh, stop was Truman Griffith. who is a junior, and they say he's a D1 prospect. So we got uh, some D1 guys on that D-line in Griffith and Woods. Second down and nine. Pass to Cohoon on the outside. And he'll run to the sidelines. And a first down. Bryce Cohoon headed to Syracuse. 5A State 100 track champion. And uh, showed off some good hands here. Comes from a very athletic background. Avery Johnson starting to heat up. The wind is at his back, and I'm starting to feel a little more wind blowing through the stadium from the south. Is Avery Johnson going to take off? And here's the 4 5 speed. Avery dances out of bounds, and he's got another first down. And the confidence of the Eagles starting to pick up here as we're down to under five to play before halftime. Well, this is something Mays' offense really needed to get going with, and this is a design quarterback draw to Avery Johnson. A lot of space in the middle of the field for him to use that speed, as you mentioned, Kevin. This is the first real drive where they've really put back-to-back first downs together here. But he's probably the third fastest guy on his team. Hayes and Cohoon, supposedly faster than him, and he's a 4-5 guy. And this running play by Carter. Much doing is he got wrapped up by Rudkowski. I feel like Rudkowski kind of flies under the radar when you got uh, Griffith and Woods and Vaca. This guy, uh, pretty solid player himself 45 tackles, seven tackles for a loss, and six sacks. Yeah, well, you look at this defensive line six sacks by Woods, five and a half by Vaca, six by Griffith, six by Rudkowski. Quick pass, and Cohoon can't hang on just outside the 30 yard line. No Valley had Coy there in coverage. Also uh, Massey. And Calhoun is frustrated with his uh, hands on this one as he normally makes this catch. He let it get in on him a little bit there, it looked like. Well, he did, and here's a big third down coming up for this Eagles offense. They just started to get in a little bit of a rhythm. Yeah. All that can end quickly if you don't convert here on third down. Now, Coach Guzman will uh, take a timeout. Timeout. Timeout made. The first charge timeout of the half. Coming up, High V at the half. Numbers highlights brought to you by your employee-owned High V stores. As there's the veteran coach, Gary Guzman. Let's check in with Leon. Hey, Kevin. You were talking about Avery Johnson committed to K-State. He announced that last summer. And by all accounts, it is a very solid commit. Don't want to worry Wildcat fans too much. But other teams are still recruiting him very hard, namely the University of Notre Dame. They've had a lot of coaches in uh, the Wichita area and Mays watching his games. Chris Kleiman, though, has also been coming to a lot of his games just to make sure he's still he's still coming to K-State. And by all accounts, he is. But other schools are still recruiting this uh, outstanding quarterback. Yeah, when you're that good, you're top ten in the country until you sign. They're going to still come after you now. Number two with the long blonde hair has a tough third down and nine. This is his best drive of the game. Avery getting away, buying time, and he's still breaking a tackle. Now turning on the speed and inside the 15-yard line. The ball came out. 
The referee is spotting him down at the 14-yard line. It'll be first and 10. And there is the brilliance of Avery Johnson. As he needed a big play, he got him 16 and a first down. Well, he did, and you're going to see Spencer Vaca come right through and the pressure right up the middle to begin with. But you mentioned the brilliance right here. Avery Johnson able to use his feet, and he definitely was down when that ball popped out at the end of that run. But that's a huge, huge first down for the Eagles. Bergeron got the tackle, and they'll give it off. And getting to the edge and running through a tackle and going out of bounds is Deshaun Carter as he delivered a hard shot there as that was Garrett Cronin, the safety coming up, and he paid a price here at the sidelines. Well, they seal the edge very nicely for Deshaun Carter, and you mentioned putting the shoulder down Oof. right over Cronin. That's first and goal, trying to tie this ball game right before the half. They're spotted officially at the four, first and goal, Eagles. And Avery Johnson off the right side. You betcha. Touchdown, Mays. And he gave the land shark signal there to the defense, saying, uh, guys, you're good. Uh, but I get in this time. Four-yard rushing touchdown. And that is his 17th rushing touchdown of the year. Well, they say big players make Big plays and big games. This guy made a few of them on this drive. Well, he did, and he put this offense on his back when he needed to, and surprisingly it wasn't with his arm, Kevin. It was with his legs on that drive. Extra point try by Mason Teague, and he hooks it through there, and we're even at seven. And this is the best drive of the game for Avery Johnson and the Mays Eagles. I mentioned it was all... Avery Johnson on this drive. The first little pitch and catch out to Bryson Hayes, and then the quarterback draw. It was the first big explosive play of this drive. Then the pressure, and this was on third down. This was the real, real big one right here. To get them down about the 15-yard line. In rhythm here to Sean Carter off the left-hand side, and then Avery Johnson finishes off the drive with his legs and at the end of the run he gave the land sharks signal that is what the mill valley defenders do and uh he sent it down to leon hey, that touchdown by every johnson a little bit historic kevin because that is the first time in more than 17 quarters of postseason football the mill valley jaguars have allowed anyone to cross the goal line anyone to get on the scoreboard that's a good point Playoffs first score and the last team to score. Prior to that was the 2021 Mays Eagles. So the drought is over as far as Mays goes. As this will be Bergeron on a kick return right near the Mays sideline. Not much. But now after missing a field goal in the last drive. Let's see what the uh, Mill Valley offense has in store for the Mays defense. But feel kind of a uh, momentum shift here in this game, maybe? Or? I don't know if it's necessarily a momentum shift yet, but remember, you know, Mill Valley missed the field goal, the short field goal. Kind of gave Mays a little bit of life offensively. And now Mays' offense is in a little bit of a rhythm. From the 29. Here's Baker for a gain of two up the middle. Padgett wraps him up. Also involved Ritter, those two top tacklers for this Mays defense. Only giving up 14 points per game. They only gave up uh, 37 in the playoffs thus far. So this uh, defense, as Gary Guzman says, uh, hey, defense has played well. Just seem to take a back seat to all our big stars on offense. Second down and eight. Baker 
Trying to cut back, and he's not going to get there as the defensive line did a great job of just kind of clogging up things, kind of holding up the play. Cunningham and Miranda, also Coffee. Those guys have done a good job of kind of just kind of putting up a wooden fence there and well, letting the linebackers scrape in and make the tackle. You want to ask, talk a little bit about momentum, Kevin. This this May's defense right now playing with a little more confidence in what they've played here so far in the first half. Starting to feel it a little bit. Mays right. go to one of their timeouts. They've got two left. If they can get a stop here, pass down the field. Has a man in stride, and he makes the catch. And he will take it to the house. Touchdown. Just like that. Preston Oliver. Now you're thinking three and out. And Hayden J. Drops one in the bucket to number 14, the senior wideout, Preston Oliver. Well, one-on-one coverage on the outside on the post. And the 6'4", 180-pound senior, Preston Oliver, came into this game with only six catches on the year. Beats the corner one-on-one. And hits pay dirt for Mill Valley. That is a heck of a throw by Jay. His 15th touchdown pass of the year, but Oliver's first receiving touchdown of the year goes for 69. As you take a look at Oliver, and uh, he did not have to break stride on this one. This was a beautifully thrown ball by quarterback Hayden Jay. Well, it was, and Hayden Jay's been short on several of his throws today, but throws his receiver open. No safety in the middle of the field. Preston Oliver wide open by about four or five yards. Hayden Jay delivers the ball where it needs to be. And Mill Valley strikes. As they celebrate, as they watch the video in the Mill Valley 10 area. And Hayden Jay saying, well, you guys were talking about that momentum Mill Valley had? Those are momentum stopping plays. Third down and long, you throw a perfect pass, 69 yards is Mick Schaefer, 41 sports anchor. You know he's the biggest Mill Valley uh, fan in the city. He's in the back row. Uh, well, actually, it looks like he's holding court there. As he's got a son, uh, he had a son, Aiden, play, and he's got another son, Abram, coming up, another D lineman, and his wife, Janae. Uh, he's he's in the top five, maybe, Mill Valley fans in the city as the kick away. On the return. And here's Cohoon with that speed. And another special team stop by Coy, just shy of the 30-yard line. Well, plenty of time here. Mays has two timeouts. Avery Johnson, a quarterback. Plenty of time to strike again here if you're the Eagles. And you got two timeouts. There you see the uh, rushing numbers for Avery Johnson. This is their four wide receiver attack. They'll give it off to Tavion Williams. Now, he and uh, Carter split carries. This guy averages 6.9 yards per carry. It's a 191 pound senior. Had over 100 yards last week in their win over Hayes. Feel like he's their uh, two minute back. As we're under two minutes to go before halftime. And Avery Johnson under duress, flagged down as he throws it away. And we got a holding penalty most likely coming up. As Jaden Woods uh, trying to get in there, and I think he got grabbed going to the quarterback. A lot of pressure from Mill Valley's defensive line. Almost looked like Mays was trying to set up a screen, even though they weren't. Holding offense number 66. Ten-yard penalty from the spot of the foul. That is the left tackle thrush. Working against Jaden Woods. And you see it right here at the bottom of the screen. Right there, has a hold of that shoulder pad. And 
Move the ball back. All the way inside the 15-yard line. Pass to Cohoon on the near side. And he's quickly grabbed on the play. And it was uh, Hasabu coming up there, number one. Also, Woods was there. And now only a gain of five out to the 21. Third down in the country mile, third down and 18. Two for six on third down conversions. Avery Johnson wants a deep ball down the field. Two receivers in the area, Cohoon and Hayes, but there are a lot of white jerseys back there as well. And sails incomplete. So they're going with the speedsters, and Avery will have to come off. New Valley was worried about quarterback draw right there in that situation too. Ran a little zone blitz, dropped a defensive lineman into coverage, as well as two linebackers spying. We're going to see right at the bottom of the screen down here. That's Cahoon going deep on the post, but coverage is there in the middle of the field. Teague in punt formation. Massey waiting near midfield. And he'll field it on a hop at the 40. Using the stiff arm. And he'll get some good yardage. Is there a flag down? Yes. A flag down here. Good return. The near side of the field. It's going to see it right happen right yep, there about right the 45 there, yeah. yard line. A shove in the back. That's what's going to be the call. It's going to wipe out a good return of 14 yards. Illegal block in the back. Number 18, the return team. 10 yard penalty from the spot of the foul. First down. minute and some change left before halftime, but as we've seen, this Mill Valley offense doesn't need a lot of time to get on the scoreboard. And I feel like uh, Coach Appleby uh, maybe wants some more points before halftime. He's got all three of his timeouts. And they'll run it with Baker. Kind of flips his way forward. And he'll get four yards on the play. Cunningham, another stop. This is kind of that double-edged sword if you're Mill Valley. You want to be a, have a little bit of sense of urgency. Oh, Jay in trouble. Breaking away from the sack. Throwing near side has Davion Harris. Breaking a tackle. Davion Harris down the sideline. The big guy rumbling, stumbling in for a touchdown. Davion Harris. Well, we saw him on the jet sweep. I thought, this guy is a tough tackle. How about in space? Big well, Davion will not be denied. Well, he got lost down here in the near sideline in the coverage. They released him. When it looked like Hayden Jay was going to get sacked, Mates, the play with his feet, found Harris, and then he just didn't get knocked out of bounds. That big guy showed good balance and walked the tightrope. As Luffman, extra point try, up and good. 21-7, 56 yards for Davion to go along with a nine-yard jet sweep. And having the game of his life is Davion Harris, the junior. Well, and you're going to see Hayden Jay just get out of the sack. And right here, you just got to make sure he gets out of bounds. Not once, but twice. And the big guy at 6'2", 200, rumbles down the sideline. And just like that, Mill Valley's up 21-7. to Yeah, Hugh Banks is the safety. That is his only job. You're the last man there. You have to get that big guy out of bounds. I know he's not an easy tackle as he's 6'2", 200, and he's got some quads on him there. But you have to get him out of bounds as we send it down to Leon. Hey, Davion Harris is a former ball boy for Mill Valley High School. How about that? He's, now he's all grown up and scoring touchdowns. But i got to tell you, Kevin, I'm going to go way old school on that uh, catch and run. He looked like Otis Taylor in Super Bowl IV breaking tackles down the sideline. Well, that's, that is old school. 
Only me and you, I think, are picking up on that reference because we're the old guys on the staff here. Big number 89, high stepping it toward the end zone down there in New Orleans. Well, Davion Harris. I mentioned he's such a hybrid player. Fair catch called for by Martin at the 25. And this guy, uh, well, the guy that's covering him does not make the tackle. Well, it's this first tackle right here that needs to happen out of bounds. Just get him out of bounds. Just push him out of bounds. You see right there, he's just on the edge of the sideline. The highlighter colored shoes help. And then that's the safety. That is your only job. And Hugh Banks grabbing his helmet going, oh, my. Frustration and a long touchdown. Back-to-back long touchdown, 69 and 56. And it's 21-7, Mill Valley. And now Avery Johnson take over with 39 seconds from the 25-yard line. And it's a running play. That is Carter. He'll get about six yards before he is bumped out by Mark Bauer, the safety. And Cronin also there as well. Mark Bauer, one of the seniors in the secondary. And this is an interesting move right here by Mays, not taking a timeout. Well, they're just going to let the clock run out. This will be the final play, barring a penalty. Avery Johnson throwing it down the field and completing the pass. But the clock will wind out. Aiden Doty, the catch. 27 yards. And we have reached halftime. And Mill Valley got off to the 7-0 start. Answered by a maze touchdown by Avery Johnson. And then the fireworks started kicking in. Mill Valley, two long passing plays of 69 and 56 yards. And they will go to their halftime locker room leading 21-7. As they go for their uh, sixth state title, fourth in a row, sixth state title in eight years. And a very impressive first half for the Mill Valley Jaguars out of the Sunflower League. As they will have the football, by the way, to start the uh, third quarter as Mays won the toss and took the football. So this offense is going to come out of the locker room with the football. And leading by two touchdowns over a team they beat by two touchdowns last year as we send it down to Leon. Yeah, Mill Valley head coach Joel Appleby with us at halftime. And uh, I want to talk about your defense early, but how about the offense, especially that, that long pass play? They had just come back to tie the game. Yeah. How important was that to, this, to get some momentum back? Uh, very important, you know, and, and uh, you know, I'm just proud of our guys for making plays when they needed to. You know, we got to start blocking people. Um, but uh, for the most part, I, you know, I was pretty pleased with the half. We just got to make some uh, adjustments here and, and really get after the second half. And the effort by Davion Harris on that second touchdown, uh, were you guys planning to try to get some more points right there? Oh, absolutely. You're always looking to score, you know. And, and uh, you know, we were going into our, our uh, two-minute, you know, offense and then uh, try to make the most of it. And so, I was, yeah, Davion made a heck of a play there. In that defense, you finally gave up some points, but they've been pretty stout in the yeah. first half. What do you got to do in the second half? Oh, we expected to give up some points. You know, this is a great team we're playing. Um, but uh, you just got to keep playing football the way we do and not, and not worry about anything else. Keep focusing on us. All right, Coach, thank you very much. Right, you. Kevin, back up to you. Thanks, Leon. And we're back with Hyvee at the half. After an explosive first half, we've seen some big plays. Avery Johnson, the number one player in Kansas with a rushing touchdown. But the Mill Valley passing game. Long one to Oliver. And a long one to Davion Harris, who made two guys miss and bolted the pay dirt down the sidelines. 21-7 halftime of the 5A state championship game. The rain is coming down now here in Pittsburgh. As it was forecast, the meteorologist was talking to Gary Guzman uh, earlier this week and he said, have you seen the weather? I said, well, yeah, I saw it. Uh, 
Seemed like it was sunny and 50. Oh, no, no. The new forecast is calling for rain during the game, Kevin. Oh, really? Uh, all right. That's not going to be good for the fans or crew. And uh, the rain, as promised by the meteorologists, is here. And temperatures not exactly warm either. Temperatures in the uh, 40s. So you got a cold, wet rain here at Carney Smith Stadium, Pittsburgh State University 5A State Championship. As we uh, check in with uh, Leon trying to stay dry as we get ready for the third quarter. Yeah, Kevin, we're here with Mays head coach Gary Guzman. Coach, what did you tell your team at, at halftime there after that frantic, uh, I guess, scoring Bins they went on at the end of the first half. Right. Now we told our offensive line, you know, it's, it always starts with you guys up front, and you know, you guys get it done, we'll get it done. You know, and, and they know they got to step up and, and uh, give our running back some creases, give our quarterback a little bit of time on the on the passing game, and and uh, defensively, I mean, we played well. We gave up two easy, quick touchdowns, and other than that, they've been playing pretty good football. So we just got to go out here and, and uh, play smart and. And not give up those easy touchdowns. All right, Coach, thank you very much. Gary Guzman, the head coach of Mays. And it is raining a little harder down here, Kevin. So, as you would say, I'm going to go find a brolly. Yes. that's what, Well, that's what they say in England. You know. Let's take a look at the high V first half numbers. Well, not the numbers you'd expect to see here from the passing yards and the discrepancy. You would assume that Mays would have the 174. But the two big plays by Mill Valley... Otherwise, it's been a pretty even first de- or first half when you look at it, time of possession-wise. Not a lot of penalties here in the first half. We haven't had any turnovers yet at all in this game. And the Mays offense just hasn't been consistent enough here in the first half. And you got to give credit to Mill Valley's defense for being a big part of that. But another factor you're going to have to deal with is the weather in the third quarter and the fourth quarter as the rain mentioned by Leon as the team's uh, getting all stretched out for the uh, third quarter. Davion Harris. I was not expecting this play. And big number 10 came uh, lumbering across the line of scrimmage, cut it up, and uh, he really surprised them on this play as they couldn't get him out of bounds. Davion Harris. Having a big ball game, a rushing touchdown and a receiving touchdown. A junior, guy with some uh, thick quads, and he's proven he is a very tough tackle as Avery Johnson. And getting warmed up, and Avery has a rushing touchdown in the ball game, but has been pressured a lot out of his uh, pocket area and had to take off several times. Well, he has, and we heard Coach Guzman talk about the offensive line. Mill Valley's been able to get some pressure with just the four guys rushing, but this is what makes Avery Johnson so difficult as well. We know he's got the golden arm, but his ability to make plays with his feet and really put this offense on his back is where the success has been for Mays in the first half. It's him getting it done on the ground. That was the four-yard rushing touchdown by Avery Johnson. Verbally committed to Kansas State, one of the top quarterbacks in the nation. People know that Arch Manning, the quarterback out of Louisiana, is the number one. But he is a uh, pro style, whereas there's categories. You get the dual threat and a pro style, and Avery is in the dual threat category and he's one of the top 10 in the country but there's about a gazillion uh, websites and rankings but Hayden Jay also had a very good first half yes I've seen him uh, throw some good balls in this game after he started the game kind of throwing some one hoppers he's come back and had a couple of nice touchdown passes well he has he struggled early on just didn't look like he was stepping into his throw a couple of them came up real short got lucky on one that was short on a seam route that uh, looked like it had a potential to get intercepted but settled down really in the second quarter Kevin as you mentioned and hitting some open receivers and making some big time plays for Mill Valley 
as we check out the numbers on championship Saturday, there is the 6A score. Gardner Edgerton, Jesse Owen, trying to get that championship for the Trailblazers. And a close one in the third quarter, leading Manhattan 14 to 7. And Bishop Miege and Wamigo. That's a battle there. Wamigo undefeated. That should go right down the wire. Some good games throughout the state. 21-14. Stags leading there. And uh, that's a table in England. That's uh, that's called being resourceful in England, by the way, if you're uh, checking. Use the wall and the old table as your umbrella. There, there you go, guys. But we were warned. Uh, I got the email that said, bring your rain gear because it's supposed to rain during the ball game. And, you know, you, you're hoping that the meteorologists are wrong, but uh, they got it this time. See a lot of the fans. I feel like the fans are pretty prepared here, Mark. You know. Well, both these teams were here a year ago. <laughs> You know, on this yeah. side of thing, they're used to play in this time of year. Both of these schools are. Fans say, I'm up on the video board. Uh, forget the rain. Let's uh, mug for the camera. All right. We are ready for the start of the third quarter. Mill Valley will get the football. Mays won the toss, took the football in the first quarter. And now this will be Teague to... Mikey Bergeron from the 14-yard line. Mikey weaving his way and a nifty run, and then it's knocked out of bounds. Fans want a flag. Let's see if they they're going to get one here. They, they got it. It's a 26-yard return and maybe additional yards tacked on with a late hit. After the play, personal foul, late hit out of bounds, number four, picking team. 15-yard penalty, first down. That's on Justin Stevens. You're going to see at the end of the play right here. Yeah, he's well out of bounds. It's the second guy in there as he's going down. I don't think it was super intentional, really, but no Valley now in May's territory to start this first drive of the second half. Long return, the 15-yard penalty. Tristan Baker put Jet up the middle to the 42-yard line. Or, uh, beg your pardon, to the 38 from the 42. Gain of four. Second down and six. Now do we see uh, this Mill Valley offense try to manage the clock a little bit? I mean, you're... I think they're going like to stick to what they like to do, and that's run the football but be balanced. It's with their play-action game. Everything we saw in the first half will be on the table here in the second half as well. Jet sweep's been effective. They don't run it this time. Hayden Jay pulls it out and runs for the first down. Hayden Jay averages over five yards per carry. He got seven on that one. And uh, I'll tell you what, he's an underrated runner. I'll tell you what, as far as his decision-making, that's the key, really. Well, it's a big portion of this offense for Mill Valley in terms of staying balanced. It really, all the play action runs to the mesh point. You see him in the pistol formation to start. Baker. Quickly grabbed on the play by Peyton Ritter. As he will get it to the 26-yard line, he'll gain six yards on the play. Baker, track athlete, had a huge game. Over 200 yards and five touchdowns as they beat Blue Valley Southwest. Their road to the 5A championship. Harmon, Shawnee Heights, Pittsburgh, and Blue Valley Southwest all in shutout fashion. Courtesy of their defense trying to get it done here. As Here's Baker. Nice vision on this run. As the offensive line is doing a great job of springing number 21 in white. Again, just the normal action. You're going to see that jet sweep action. Look at the hole right Pulling there. Pulling Davion Harris back behind and a huge hole for Tristan Baker. 
Well, these tackles are huge. 78 goes 6'8", 243. The right tackle is 6'7", 205 pounds. So those tackles come at you. You don't know if you're going to be playing basketball against these guys or what because they're some big dudes. And they'll give it off to Baker. Running room. Baker close to the first down, out a yard shy. Obviously, Mill Valley is uh, exerting their will right now, running the football. Well, they are, and Christian Hansen coming off the edge for Mays. Thought he had Hayden Jay in the backfield, but a little quick hitter up inside first to Tristan Baker. This is a solid opening drive right here for Mill Valley. Second down, short. Baker, cut back. And he'll get it to the five. It'll be first and goal, wrapped up by Paget. Baker saw some time last year. He gets the bulk of the carries. Marion Graves gets some touches as well, but... Uh, tell you what if you saw this guy in person he is not the biggest guy in the world and uh, he is just a tough customer out there uh, he's listed at 59 a buck 70 a junior first and goal and jay pulls it jay back to the line of scrimmage and that's it tackle from behind there by jaden ford Defensive backs. Hanson there as well. There you see Hanson. Defensive end. I'm starting to see Mays coming up. Peeking some linebackers up into the A and B gaps here. Try to shut down that running game. On second down and goal. Here's Baker. It's a hard hit. Only back to the line of scrimmage is that was a Ritter. Made some hard contact on the Mill Valley running back here. You can probably hear this one. This is a really nice tackle. And defense, as you hear. You mentioned Ritter coming in from his linebacker position. And this is a big third down right here for Mays on defense. Third down and goal. Pass, and it's caught by the man of the day, Davion Harris, having a ball game of his life as it just got past the defender's hands. And now Davion has two receiving touchdowns and a rushing touchdown. And it's all about Big D. Davion Harris with a receiving touchdown of five yards with the PAT pending. Hoffman, extra point, right through, 28-7, and Davion Harris came in with three catches, 42 yards, and one touchdown. And Mark, he is having the game of his life. This was a very effective third-quarter starting drive by this Mill Valley team. They ran it down the defense's throat and then converted on a third-and-goal play. Well, the only th passing play on this drive, Kevin, was the touchdown. And you saw it right there, play action, strong. Davion Harris sneaking into the end zone for his third touchdown of the day. One of those on the ground, two of those through the air. But nine plays, eight of those were running plays for Mill Valley on that opening drive here of the second half. Extending the lead to 28-7. They were aided by a late hit on a good kickoff return, so they had a shorter field, took some time off the clock, moved it down the field. And Davion Harris. By the way, Jay's now thrown three touchdown passes, 17 on the year. As this is a short directional kick, this will be Martin, a wide receiver from the 18-yard line. And no Valley 
staying in their lanes. And it'll be Bryce Martin on the stop. A really nice job by Bryce Martin on contain out here to the bottom of the screen because they had a couple look like potential running lanes if he was able to get to the outside. But Bryce Martin holding contain for Mill Valley on the kickoff team. Only seven yards on the return. And now Avery Johnson in the offense coming out. Avery keeping a towel over his hand to keep it dry. And there it is now. He gets out his hand and takes the snap. Give it off to Tavion Williams. And he is back to the line of scrimmage. And that is it. And paid a heavy price for that. Yes. Coy there. Well, I saw Wooster come flying in. And see those uh, shark fins. They call themselves the land sharks. Man, they've been uh, eating a lot of chum. Is that what the, is it, is that the, it is? Yeah, I guess eating a lot of chum thus far. Well, this front seven of this Mill Valley defense is so good. Quick pass to the outside. A catch. And that is uh, Aiden Doty, who's kind of a tight end slash H-back. And he dives ahead and... Get about eight yards of the play. It's going to be third down and short. He had a TD catch in last year's game. And uh, now they got it third and manageable as Zygmunt. Good to see him playing. He was question mark with a foot injury. One of their safety guys. Third down and short. Running play for a first down. That's a big first down for Mays. It's Tavion Williams. They've got to put a drive a little bit together here. And a nice job by the offensive line opening up this hole to the right-hand side. We're going to see Tavion Williams stick that left foot in the ground and get up and pick up this first down. Tavion, a uh, point guard on the uh, basketball team. And, of course, a uh, big story in sports yesterday. Caleb Grill, former Mays uh, standout basketball player, lit up North Carolina for 31. And an upset for Iowa State is Doty. With his second straight catch, Doty fighting hard near the 40-yard line. So Aiden Doty coming up big on a couple of nice receptions, and he'll take it down to the 41-yard line. 20 yards in this one, and makes the catch, bounces off a tackler, and fighting hard there. A nice concentration by Doty in this rain. Pull that down, a little quick hitter from Avery Johnson. First and ten. Williams stepping to the outside. That's usually a mistake against this defense. Mark Bauer, the safety man, with the fundamental tackle. They just pursue so fast defensively. Yeah, you've and got to run north-south against it, this You defense. do, but this is, this is a nice little bounce out right here, but the form tackle and the ability of Mill Valley's defense to make the one-on-one -on -one tackles in those situations is what has made this defense so good over the years. The fu how fundamentally sound they are in tackle. Quick pass outside. Jaden Martin gets the block. Jaden Martin immediately grabbed by Zygmunt. Just inside the 25-yard line. But I like what Mays is doing on this drive, Kevin. They've incorporated the running game a little bit more. I know you're down 28-7, but you still have to have the ability to we talked about this in the first half, how they're a balanced style of offense. Now you're throwing a little bubble screen out to the right-hand side. I guess at 25, 35, inside the 35 to the 33. And now big down and distance, third down and short. Avery Johnson calling his own number. Avery Johnson fighting. I don't think he's going to get there as that is Jaden Woods holding on to his waist. And let's see how they spot this football. Looks like they're a little short. Fourth down. Just a little bit short here by Avery Johnson. Play clock is going to single digits. Might need a timeout here. 
going for it on fourth down. Give it off to Tavion Williams. Busts it off the left side. Tavion Williams to the house. Touchdown. 32 yards on fourth down and one. And the senior tailback scores his 12th rushing touchdown of the year. Well, you don't see this against Mill Valley's defense a lot, but we see this a lot in these fourth and short situations, a big-time run as you sell out defensively. And that's exactly what the Mays Eagles needed on that drive. Drew Kemp to hold. And Mason Teague, extra point. Right through there. As Tavion Williams. The bust one, an explosive play, 30 plus yards. As you look at the plays of this drive, like I said, I, I, I liked what Mays was doing offensively here. Using the running game throughout the course of this drive, the little bubble screen, the quick hitter to Doty. Up the seam. Get the ball to your playmakers in space. This, these little bubble screens are an extension of the running game, and here's the fourth down. Huge hole, and then the speed just takes over for Tavion Williams. Yeah, they say he's very similar. Tied back to uh, Deshaun Carter. He's eight play, 75 yards, and capped on the fourth down run of 32 by... Tavion Williams, who had a big ball game last week, over 100 yards and two touchdowns in the win over Hayes. Rain continues to fall. Mill Valley expecting an onside kick here as they are crowding the 10-yard mark. Flag is Prior down. Kick, delay game, kicking team. Five yard penalty, kick. So back to back penalties on kickoffs. Guzman got to be frustrated with that. They'll move back, but still got to be aware of a squib ball on a rainy, wet Saturday. Wide receiver I see up there is Hayes Miller. He's right in the middle of that 10-yard block, and they'll send it down the field. And he'll be returned from the 20-yard line. And a good return again by Mill Valley. And that was Andrew Watts, one of the wide receivers for the Jaguars on that good return. And another good start to their drive. Really good field position here again to start for Mill Valley. Just getting on the turf here at Carney Smith. Still, it's a 22 yard kickoff return. Good field position now for the Jaguars. Jay with Baker in the backfield on his left hip. Baker for three. Hanson making the stop, lost his helmet, will leave the field momentarily. Christian Hanson's really had a nice game for Mays defensively. Talked about their un underrated portion of this team, this defense, but really led by their defensive line with Miranda and Hanson. He was in the running back room early in his career, and it was just filled with guys that were a little bit faster, but he instead of saying, oh, they're not going to play running back, I'll just give it up. He moved to a different position and has excelled at a defensive end. As here's Baker. Nice tackle there by Flores, scraping down the outside linebacker. Aiden Jay, three TD passes and some long ones to boot. 56, 69, and also the five-yarder to uh, Davion Harris. Snap it. 
Third and four. Running play. Baker first down and more. And as that right side opened up, and again, the guys on the offensive line doing a great job. Hawkins, Melvin, Marsh, McKinnon, and Kemp. But this is more the, the right side there. Good block there by Kemp. It looked like the right tackle. Well, six-man box in there as Mill Valley put two guys out to the outside, pulled a safety, went ahead with the running play based on the formation, and it's a first down for the Jaguars. Kemp's a junior, definite college prospect. Both their tackles very tall. Mill Valley thought uh, they jumped into the neutral zone, did the maze defense, and now the right guard is saying he was induced by the movement by... It's Hanson up there. I've seen Hanson jumping around. We'll let Jeff Wells sort this all out. Well, the entire right side of the Mill Valley offensive line started pointing. Snap. Snap and two. Five yards down. Yeah. So that was the right guard that moved early. And it seemed like Hanson jumping a little bit early. And that's where you see the step there. The left foot moving by McKinnon is the penalty. First and 15 now. Jaguars back near midfield. Bodies running off the field and now Hayes Miller kind of jumped the huddle early and lined up early. What's going on? Preston Oliver, too. Hayden Jay keeping it on a quarterback read option, lowering his head and shoulder. Taken down there by C.J. Felder, junior cornerback. Second down and long here. I wouldn't be surprised. We saw this at the end of the first quarter. Mill Valley going to try to go hard count, maybe steal a couple here. Only 15 seconds to go here in the third quarter. Second down and 11. Plus side of the 50. I don't know if they're going to snap it before the clock runs out. Nope. End of the third quarter. And both teams... With a, a touchdown in the third quarter, Snow Valley via the pass as Davion Harris continues to have a sensational game. And Mays got one on the ground on a fourth down run by Williams. Ivy scoring by quarters here in rainy Pittsburgh. 5A state championship game. The Valley got off to the fast start. Mays tied it at seven. But this is the score of the game last year. Let's see what the 2022 version ends up being. Second down and long. Jay buying time, throwing low, incomplete. Targeting Davion Harris. It's going to be third down and long facing the Mill Valley offense as we begin the fourth quarter. Jay got whacked at the end of this play. Well, I think Miranda hit him here. Yeah, bootleg. Look at Harris is coming across the middle of the field. Hayden Jay just getting rid of this ball in that situation. Good coverage by the Eagles defense. Miranda, the top D lineman for this squad for the Mays 4-2-5 defense. Jay secures the ball, throws. Davion Harris goes down low, makes the catch right at the marker. Now he signals, but I think he's a little bit short. Let's see. What are they spotting this football? And they say first down. So Davion was right. Davion officiating, scoring touchdowns. A junior having a big ball game here. Nice job. And you see Hayden Jay, the ball's wet, having to kind of shot put this out there, but he's right at the marker. 
And he's just past that hash mark right there. I wonder where his the knee line of went. The line was yeah. the, the 33, and he was right on it. Yep. Put his knee down right there, first and 10. And here's Baker breaking one tackle. Ball came out, and looks like Mays has covered it up. Somebody stripped it from behind, and Miranda covered it up as that was Hanson ball hawking. And Miranda has the fumble recovery. A new life for Mays. I think this is 24. Christian Hansen, you mentioned coming on the back side. It was right there. Well, looked like the second the man. initial contact, yeah. And then that ball pops loose, and that's the first turnover today, Kevin, in this ball game. And a big one for the Mays Eagle defense. Somebody on the backside knocked it away. And here comes Avery Johnson in the offense. From the 33, quick pass to the edge. Hayes can't hang on. This is one of their staple plays. Throw it to the guy with the 437 speed, and he just jets down the sideline. But you got to catch the ball and on a rainy Saturday in Pittsburgh, Kansas. Well, here's the other thing. When you look at this now with this rain, a lot of these receivers have taken off their gloves. Kevin used to catch them with the gloves. They can get a little slick in the rain. But you have to secure the football first in these situations. Well, the playoff weather has been not that great. These guys have already seen the rain, wind, snow, cold. So the weather has not been great. And quarterback draw, and there's the shiftiness of Avery Johnson, but Wooster really didn't get faked out too badly as he makes the stop. And it's going to be third down. They're still going to need about four. Well, an empty set for Mays offensively. Quarterback draw all the way. Wooster was really the spy in the middle, able to make the play, but not until Avery Johnson picks up about six yards. Big down and distance. Third down and four. You're three for nine on conversions on third down. And they'll give it off to their running back. And he will get the first down and end up near the Gatorade. Deshaun Carter and the fans on the May side are upset. They wanted a late hit flag as Carter almost ended up on the Gatorade jug. That's what you're hearing, the grumbling of the Mays fans, but Mark, you're shaking your head. You don't think so. I think this contact comes just inside the, the yard line right here. Let's see where he actually gets hit. Yeah, he's still in the field of play right here at this situation. But he uh, went a fly in there, like I said. Uh, some of the Gatorade Cups went a fly. Pass over the middle. Doty right at 10 yards and close to the first down. Doty's come alive in the second half. That's his third catch. Of the second half. That's a nice little RPO. Same play that they ran in the third quarter to Doty for a first down. It is enough for a first down. Pass near side. Cohoon immediately hit. As that is uh, Hasabu. Senior cornerback. Baruch Hasabu. A little brother on the team, Elroy. One thing we haven't seen yet, we've seen a lot of these little hitches to the outside of Cahoon. Watch for a double move here coming up at some point here in the fourth quarter. They got four on the play, and now Avery Johnson going to tuck and run, and he's grabbed by Bergeron as he got it to the 36-yard line. Gain of four on the play. See the quarterback's Regripping the ball. Yeah, he's trying to throw this in the bubble screen, but Ratowski got his hands up in the throwing lane. Nowhere to go for Avery Johnson. Quick pass outside. Cohoon. The... Oh, he can't make the catch. Ball was a little high. And Sabu right there, and Cohoon a little frustrated, maybe a little shaken up as he got uh, hit right as the ball uh, kind of sailed toward him. And did he peek? You can see the 
Was he looking down? Might have been a little bit, but you can certainly see the weather affecting both quarterbacks in terms of how they're throwing the ball. Yeah, that was not a tight spiral. That was an uncharacteristic throw, too. It was a wobbler, yep. Wounded duck. Fourth down, Porton drive. Avery Johnson fighting. It's going to be close. I don't think he got it. I, the way they're spotting this, it looks to be short. And he extended late, but I still think he's a little bit short. But let's wait for the officials well, the, to sort it, this out. This, the yard to gain is right at the 34-yard line, and both officials oh, yeah, are lined short. up short of that. Ball over on down. So the turnover doesn't cost the... Mill Valley Jaguars as they will take over football, uh, take over the football after a fourth down stop. I want to go back to two plays ago too, but you're going to see this first. Avery Johnson, I'm going to see where this ball is spotted. He's got to get, but he's getting pushed back as he's reaching though right there. I don't mind the spot, but two plays ago on second down on that little scramble, he kind of went back out to the outside where if he went forward, he might have been in a better position to get the first down on that second down play. Motion by Oliver. Running play to Baker. Baker to the 39, a gain of four. Here's that second down play I was talking about. Watch where Avery Johnson ends up right here. If he heads forward right there, that's the yard to gain. It was a 31-yard line just past or excuse me, the 34-yard line, just past the 30-yard line, but he went sideways, got tackled two plays later, they come up short. And Hanson too aggressive again. Prior to the snap, encroachment, number 20 for defense. Five-yard penalty remains second down. Hanson, hair on fire kind of guy, blocked a punt last week. Had eight tackles against Hayes, so he loves playing defense after he originally started out as a running back. Second down and short. There's the first down run by Baker as he'll get it to the 48, gain of five yards as the clock continues to run. So the clock continues to run. Still eight minutes to go here in the fourth quarter, but Mays needs to get a stop or a turnover. And Baker running near side across midfield with a decent run. Baker, uh, Tell you what, he's efficient. Not a lot of flash or dash with this guy. But nice four-yard gain, second down and six. <laughs> Running the play clock. Under 10 seconds. This one not going for much of anything as Paget makes the stop. No gain. Paget, all conference player, second leading tackler on the team. Watch the hard count again in these situations. Mill Valley's done it multiple times today. Drawn a couple of offsides penalties by the Mays defense. Trying to steal an extra five yards. And they give it off to Baker, and he's kind of somersaults his way. And he is short of the first down. 
just kind of flying forward. Just, oh, no, he looks, slipped. Oh, yeah. Looks like he got stepped on, just hit yeah. the the back of his guard. Jack Melvin's foot kind of tripped him up just a tad. Otherwise, that's a first down run. Yeah, it opened up nicely, but just lost his footing. Fourth down. Mays needing the stop. Trying to go hard count. They're going to take a timeout. Take the timeout. Yep. Yeah, go ahead. All right, timeout. Out. Try to get again. Timeout, gone to that hard count Start several times today. Half. See this team, the numbers, the dynasty, trying to go four straight, six of the last eight, but Coach Appleby can get his sixth today. He's going to tie some notable people. One of the guys in that huddle, Gene Weir, his offensive line coach, he would tie him with six state titles. Gene won with the Eagles of Olathe North, and also his cousin, Derby, Brandon Clark. Sure, coach. Not worried about that. He's just trying to either pin these guys deep. I feel like they might do pooch. But let's send it down to Leon. Hey, Kevin, you just mentioned Brandon Clark, the first cousin of Joe Appleby, and for the first time in a long time, he's not doing anything on Thanksgiving weekend as the Derby Panthers didn't make the 6A title game. He's here watching this game. Family support. Their cousins and talk to coaches around the state. They say they run very similar programs. And the punt is blocked. The ball is loose. And it's going to be covered up inside the 35-yard line. So they blocked one last week. They blocked one this week. And I think it was that Hanson guy again. I think it's two weeks in a row for number 24 to get a punt block. Well, and they should have blocked. <laughs> <laughs> wow, they should have blocked one earlier. You're right. The uh, they missed half, the leg well, earlier. So getting through again, a big-time play. That's essentially a turnover right there, Kevin. When you look at the field position side of things, there was no doubt on blocking this one. Now well, they're going to give that one to Ritter. I think it was Peyton Ritter, number 19, the linebacker. And now new life for Mays as they take over at the 34-yard line, trailing by two touchdowns. Johnson. All day to throw, and too tall for Jaden Martin, incomplete at the 31. Coverage by Bergeron. There you take a look at the linebacker with the punt block, Peyton Ritter. So back-to-back -back weeks with punt blocks, and that one was a much-needed play. Now they must skip points quickly. Yes. Down by two touchdowns. The quarterback's having to throw a wet football on a rainy Saturday in Pittsburgh. Inside run. And that will be Tavion Williams to the 30 for four. Well, the sudden change on first down. Mays trying to throw, take a shot. But I like sticking with the running game here. I know you need, you're down 14 points and you got to get moving here. A little bit of a sense of urgency, but still operate within the scope of your offense. The clock is not your friend when you're down two touchdowns with just over five. As they're trying to pick up the pace, pass near side. And it's caught by Cohoon. And he's going to be close right at the first down marker. Maybe that second effort got it for him. Well, that's touching the 24-yard line, which is right where the line to gain is. I think that's a first down. Officials have not signal it. Yes, now they do. First down, Mays move the chains. And the home fans are, uh, I don't know, sarcastically cheering there. Johnson goes deep middle, has a man. It's Blocked away, incomplete. He picked him no, up. intercepted. Bergeron got it on the rebound. The ball was 
tipped by a defensive back. That is Mark Bauer, and then Bergeron gets the pick in the back of the end zone. And that'll be the first turnover of the game by Mays. Now they threw into a crowd here, Mark, and this ball... Well, that ball's right where it needs to be, to be honest with yep. you, Kevin. That's just a great defensive play by Mark Bauer coming in. Watch him get that hand up and just knock it away, and then Mikey Bergeron's right there. Bergeron with the awareness. That ball was on him fast. I mean, he's running full speed, and it comes in on him. That's why I was, like, shocked that he was able to get that. It <laughs> a really good throw, a even better defensive play. By Mark Bauer getting that hand in there, and then Mikey Bergeron with the reaction to come away with that. Yeah, that is uh, hand-eye coordination after a short run by Baker as that ball was tipped and then right in his face mask. And he was able to lock onto it, pick it off for his third interception of the year. That is only the third interception thrown by Avery Johnson. And now clock-burning mode is what Mill Valley wants to do as they look for their fourth straight state title. Flags down prior to the snap. And I don't know if you could hear the uh, White Hat, he said the defensive line, one of the defensive linemen is yelling the snap count, which is illegal, and that'll be a penalty on the defense. Disconcerting acts, defense, five yard penalty. Don't see that one call very much, and that'll not make the Mays home crowd uh, very happy. Yeah, that was a. Uh, I heard what he was saying. He said they're yelling out the snap count, trying to mess Mill Valley up, and that is a penalty. So now second down and short. Again, they're not going to snap the football. The play clock is 30-plus, so they're going to wait till it goes under a single digits, I would imagine, here before they're going to. Yeah, they're going to go ahead and take this down as long as they possibly can. This is called managing a football game, finishing off a game, finishing off an opponent. And after they made a huge mistake with that, I don't know, trying to throw off the rhythm of the offense by yelling out the snap count. It's kind of a dirty play. Officials got him, and now here's Baker picked up and taken down. It was Ritter again. And Ritter had the punt block. He really brings the hammer inside from his linebacker position. Their leading tackler on the year, 11 tackles for loss, and he's made some loud plays here today defensively for Mays. Leading tackler last week in their win over Hayes. Having fun out there on a rainy Saturday. You see the smile. This team down by two touchdowns. Third down and short. Let's see if they can uh, get him to jump off sides. We saw one hard count, and now the quarterback will take the timeout. So Jay Burns, the second Hill Valley timeout. Well, Davion Harris, the Rex Specs. The huge quads, all about the touchdowns today. What's well, been Davion Harris's day? This is a big fourth down conversion in the first quarter that got yeah. everything going for Mill Valley offensively. Yeah, this guy, Davion's been scoring the touchdowns, but this guy's been grinding. Tristan Baker's been doing a lot of the work inside for Mill Valley, and he talked about his size at 5'8, about 170. Tough kid getting it done on the ground. And doing the work that Mill Valley needed him to do here this afternoon. Now Baker trying to convert on third down. They need less than a yard. Fake the jet sweep. Quarterback keeps it on the read option. First down, Jay across the 40. And he is taken down by the 
cornerback, and uh, Felder fell hard there. And he is shaken up. We'll have an injury timeout for C.J. Felder, junior cornerback. But the first down is acquired there by Hayden J. He's called his own number. Just kind of his decision making. Well, third and short, we just got done talking about Baker carrying the load inside, but Hayden J pulling that football out of the mesh point and picking up the first down. And that's a big first down for Mill Valley here. Coach has raved about how hard this guy works on his game prep, getting ready for opponent. What a vocal leader. And he said, you know, that the one thing you don't hear from him is a you know, negative statement about his team. He's always bringing positive energy to the football field, to the practice field, to the locker room. And, you know, all the things, that one probably gets overlooked a lot, but... If you keep it positive, uh, that's that's big as we send it down to Leon. Well, Kevin, as we know, there's other state championship games going on across the state of Kansas today. And in Class 4A, we have a final. Bishop Miege wins another state championship. Miege over Wamigo, 35-14. to 14. So congratulations to John Holmes and his team. And how about in Class 6A in Emporia? Manhattan, Gardner, Edgerton tied 14-14 to 14 in overtime. Yeah, that's... There's a good one going on at ESU. and Short run should be enough for uh, Baker. And Baker, I'll tell you what, he is trying to shake it off. But he has had a very good game running the football. He's, he's coming to the sidelines. And congratulations again, Coach Holmes. I want to check out that... Uh, Piece Sean Belden did on Coach Holmes and miking him up. And you talk about a guy that uh, is positive energy and just uh, a bundle full of energy during a game. That is John Holmes. Congratulations to him as he gets his seventh state title today. And now the celebration beginning for the folks from Shawnee from the DeSoto School District, Mill Valley and the dynasty that they are creating and uh, continuing as they're going to have four in a row and six of eight and the domination continues here at Carney Smith Stadium for Joel Appleby state championship number six in the last eight years four in a row Congratulations, the Mill Valley Jaguars, the 2022 5A state champs. Let the celebration begin. Hyvee post game coming up. Well, last year, Mill Valley won 28-14. This year, Mill Valley wins 28-14. Four in a row for the Jags. Sportsmanship at a Kansas State High School Activities Association. Big priority as the team's shaking hands. Mill Valley, four in a row. Six of the last eight. State championships in football in 5A. Congratulations, Joel Appleby and his staff as they get the victory 28 to 14. They led it 21 to 7 at half. They scored first. Their defense, uh, the real deal as they continue to celebrate with their head coach now, Joel Appleby with Leon. Now we'll get to Leon uh, momentarily. Everybody happy there. But uh, Mark, uh, the Mill Valley defense, the real deal. Hayden Jay, uh, a veteran, got it done 
as now we're going to check in with Leon and the coach. Yeah, I'm with Joel Appleby, the head coach of Mill Valley. Four consecutive state championships, six out of the last eight years. I think we need to start talking about your program in historic terms, but singularly, this team in particular. Unbelievable. Uh, senior leadership, unbelievable. Coaching staff, unbelievable. Um, I'm kind of at a lost words. I don't know what to say. I mean, it's the seniors, what they've accomplished and what they've done, it's just... Uh, it's unreal. It really is. Um, again, I don't know. There's not a lot of words they put to it other than they're just unbelievable. Coming in this game, we heard so much about Avery Johnson, rightfully so, one of the best yeah. quarterbacks anywhere. But Absolutely. your quarterback, yeah. Aiden Jay, threw three touchdown passes yeah. in this game. Was he a little motivated? Oh, uh, you know, I like I told someone earlier this week. You know, any competitor, obviously, probably in the back of his mind, Hayden's focused on him. He's he's a one of the best leaders we've ever had in our program. Um, Love that kid. I can't say enough great things about that kid. He's unbelievable. And your defense is great. Again, one more thing. Six state championships for you now. I think that matches your assistant, Gene yeah. Weir. You going to a little bragging right now? <laughs> yeah, well, he's got eight now, so. <laughs> <laughs> That's right. Coach, I'll let you go celebrate. Well, thank thank you. you so much. Thank you very much. Appreciate All right. It. Kevin, back to you. By the way, the same exact score as last year. Yep, good point. And uh, I tell you what, there might have been a tear coming down the eye of Joel Appleby, but the rain is uh, – not showing it. Uh, you could see the emotion and how proud he is of his team as they really played well here today. Well, they did, and, and you know, they got a lot of pride in, in their defenses. That's it, his son, by the way. It's one of the best in the state, and it shows. And I talked about the fundamentals of how they tackle uh, over the last several years in, in covering this team and watching them in the games that we've had them on, Kevin. Um, just so impressed with them. And then offensively, they do, just do so many good things, and and, you know, Mays had a tremendous year, came into this game 12-0 and on the season. Avery Johnson, a tremendous quarterback, just couldn't get the consistency going today in the passing game when they needed to. And then right there in the fourth quarter, they got the fumble, the turnover. You thought, hey, okay, they're down 14. They might go down here and, and get right back into this thing and make it a seven-point game, but then turned it over on downs when he gets tackled about a half yard short. So a tremendous 5A state championship game once again, though. Special thanks to all our uh, folks at the Kansas State High School Activities Association, the ADs, Brent Bouchard and Aaron Leichner. Thanks to the coaches, Joel Appleby and Gary Guzman's team finishes at 12-1. and one. Our producer, Joe Novacek, for Mark Borichter, Leon Liebel, and our entire Spectrum Sports crew battling the rain here in Pittsburgh. Kevin White saying so long from Pittsburgh State University in Carney Smith Stadium. Congratulations, four in a row for Mill Valley 5A state champions of 2022 as we say good day from Pittsburgh, Kansas.